Welcome back. It's to Plus Politics. The administration of the federal capital territory, Abuja, has announced a ban on street protests. The ban is believed to be an effort to stop the hashtag NSAS protesters who have been marching the street since last week, demanding a ban on the special anti robbery court SARS. The ban on protest was announced by the spokesperson of the Federal Capital Territory Administration, Anthony Ogunle. He said the FCT Security Committee met earlier in the week and noted the unruly conduct of protesters, in quotes now. Joining us to discuss this is the public affairs analyst, Mr. Gide Ojo, who joins us from the FCT. Good evening, Mr. Gide Ojo. Good evening, my brother. Oh, How good. do you do? I'm great. And I can still, hear you. And we still have Mr. Gbolaoba in the house. Yeah, before we go into Mr. Gide Ojo, I mean, Mr. Gbolaoba, you have the right to respond to some of the issues raised by uh, Reverend Joseph Hayab on the, you know, the, 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 the seeming silence in the northern part about this protest. Let me quickly take Mr. Bolaba for the next 60 seconds before moving to the second topic. To respond to what the gentleman said in his closing remark? Yes, sir. Or you have no other issue to say about it? No, no to, to be very honest with you, I think the only thing I have to say at this juncture is that we cannot be approbating and be reprobating at the same time. We... I guess the network is quite unfriendly where you are. But let's get into the second discussion. If we're able to reconnect with you, we will still allow you to make your position. So, Mr. Gideo Joe, what exactly is going on? We saw the protesters define this directive not to protest. What's your take on this, sir? Well, um, my take is very simple that you cannot actually take away the right of Nigerian citizens to protest. Uh, what should have ordinarily been done is to guide the protesters. Uh, the police act that was just amended in September 2020 actually also reinforces constitutional provision for Nigerians' rights to uh, hold peaceful protest. Here you are, the protesters are not armed. They are not in any way uh, uh, injurious or constituting uh, any danger to the peace and law and order of the FCT. And they are, their grievances are very genuine. So uh, I think, um, although from the standpoint of the federal government, uh, Abuja or FCT being the federal capital territory, and with a lot of diplomatic missions, you do not want uh, the international community to have a feeling of sense of insecurity in the, in the FCT. Uh, be that as it may, what could have been done is to confine the protesters to a particular area where they can uh, exercise their franchise. I don't see any reason why they cannot protest at the National Assembly complex. There is a forecourt that is very big and where these protesters could actually be confined and allowed to be a release that Nigerians can protest at the Unity Fountain. But I am against a disruption of public peace. I'm against the disruption of vehicular movement. But the right, of, right to protest by Nigerians is an inalienable right and should have ordinarily be guaranteed and protected by the FCT administration. Okay, um, why still staying with the FCT administration? And uh, probably since you brought in this discussion, uh, there are maybe not many popular voices about what they describe as public nuisance, telling them they cannot move, telling them that the road is blocked, telling them you've got to feel this pain. How do we bridge the gap to still allow, you know, people on the streets, commuters, to have a free flow? Exactly what I said that, that you know, even in UK, you have the right to protest. There is there is a speaker's corner, uh, the speaker's corner where people are allowed to ventilate their views. 
And that's why I said there is a forecourt, a very big forecourt in the National Assembly. These people wanted to go to the National Assembly. They were barricaded, soldiers were deployed. And if they have allowed them at least to, to stay within that precinct of the forecourt, uh, I'm not saying at the, at, the, uh, uh, at the balcony of the National Assembly. There is a very huge, where you have the maze, uh, the, 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 there is a big forecourt uh, before you get to the offices of the National Assembly. Uh, these protesters are not up to a thousand. They could have easily be allowed to use that space for their protest and take them off the highway. Uh, I, I do not subscribe to blocking the road because that would erode the sympathy that ordinary citizens should have for these protesters. Uh, when you, I mean, just imagine somebody being rushed to the hospital and you are barricaded the road. What if the patient dies? What if somebody who is, um, who, who is in a, uh, a labor is being rushed or an accident victim is being rushed to the hospital and you are barricaded the road? I do not support the barricading of the road, but at least they should have been allowed to ventilate their views at either the Unity Fountain, which is uh, a, 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 a place that um, a lot of protests in Abuja have been allowed to hold, or you know, at the forecourt of the of the National Assembly, the, in either of the two, uh, that will have taken them off the streets and the free flow of movement, the free flow of vehicular movement, and human movement will not have been any way affected. But you see, when you shut down peaceful protests and you allow these elements to go underground, that can be dangerous. And we do not want an armed conflict or not to strike a delicate balance between guaranteeing the right of citizens to protest and also um, making sure that public peace and order is not in any way endangered. Okay, let's also look at, um, I think we are all together on this, that it is our inalienable right to uh, do protests. But what about the COVID protocols? which the FCT authorities cited. Uh, uh, as much as we know the constitution is the ground norm, but what about the emergency that we are faced with? Exactly. Uh, it's, a, it's a worrisome development because I've also monitored the protest. Uh, there is no physical distancing. There is uh, also no... Uh, strict observance of COVID-19 protocols, whether in terms of wearing a face mask or hand washing or using sanitizers and all of that. But then, uh, to be told, there is a lot of demystification of uh, COVID-19. Uh, you recall that we just exited the uh, Ondo and Edo elections. And politicians, this Nigeria, you saw politicians as they go on campaign without any scant, without any regard for COVID-19 mm -hmm. protocols. So if they can be allowed to hold their rallies, nobody has been called to order among the political class in Edo and in Ondo State for breaching COVID-19 protocols. How then do you now blame Nigerian youth if they don't believe in COVID-19 or that um, Nigeria has exited the COVID-19 because as, as has been said, uh, they have been able to flatten the curve. But I know, you see, uh, this issue of COVID-19 is about individual taking responsibility. If you fail to take responsibility, you are endangering not only your life, but that of the others, and you, as well as the, uh, your family members primarily. But I think uh, the, the greatest incitement to crime is, uh, you know, impunity. If in Edo and in Odo, political class was allowed to have mass gathering, all campaign rally for months and nobody was called to order, no sanction was imposed, then how do you now say that Nigerian youth should not gather in protest? The most important thing is that uh, it's quite unfortunate that we have this situation on our hands. Government itself has not helped matter because of the, uh, the, the, the lack of distrust that has happened over the years. We are time and again uh, Nigerian public are deceived with uh, so-called reforms that they said they have done. Uh, this is not the first time they said they have answers. 
uh, they have scratched us in 2017, 2018, 2019. And that's why Nigerians are not believing that even if they go off the streets now, that Nigerian government will do the needful uh, to reform the uh, security agencies called Nigerian police. So okay, Mr. Jim. Large, I, 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 have, I, I, I too have that concern about COVID-19 and the likelihood of a spike uh, in those places, not only in FCT, but many of the places where this... Um, uh, okay. And uh, such protest. Okay, I, I, I'll come back to you. I, I understand we have Mr. Bolaba back online. Mr. Bolaba, so sorry about the network. I wish we could help the situation. But let me quickly get your take on the issue of ban of protests in FCT vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, the COVID protocol that has been flouted. That seems to be the premise where the FCT authorities is coming from. So how do we manage the situation? Mr. Jide Ojo mentioned the fact that um, our leaders have not demonstrated a good example, but do the blind, you know, have to treat the blind the same way? Shouldn't we find a way of getting the things done properly? I was very honest with you. I could barely, I could barely string together uh, uh, all you said. I wonder if you hear me very well, but if you hear me very well, I didn't hear you very well. Okay, I, I can hear you very well. What is your take about the ban of protests in FCT? Let's make it that short. Okay, the issue of the authorities refusing initially to allow them to, to protest because uh, because of the COVID situation. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, to be very honest with you, uh, the government must at least uh, act in a way that they believe is responsible because from the think of it, uh, the, the COVID phenomenon COVID-19 phenomenon is still uh, a, a global, you know, uh, uh, pandemic as we speak. So they did what a government entity would do, but the protesters too, like protesters in all other countries, have devised mechanisms to to beat them to it. So to the best of my understanding, uh, the protesters, are still coming out. So the government has to do what the government has to do, but the protesters too have been doing what they think they, they ought to do. So I, I don't see, I don't want to be apportioning blames because let's be very honest with ourselves. If the government didn't speak to the contemporary issue of the pandemic that is still prevalent, uh, the government will be seen by other governments across the world to be acting responsibly. Even in America, governments in states where it, governments in democratic states that were largely uh, receptive, most supportive, receptive of the Black Lives Matter protests were also accentuating the fact that people should go to protest, making sure that they, they either some of the uh, protocols to, to forestall the spread, you know, the spread spreading of, 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 the, of the novel virus. Okay, thank you for that position. So, Mr. GJ, uh, I'm, I'm just looking at um, um, the likelihood of what you expect. Uh, we were showing some pictures while you, while you were talking, and they were disturbing pictures of of about four or five vehicles co confirmed by the police were vandalized by, pardon my language, this is my word, looking at the video, by thugs in FCT. What do we expect? Is this meant to intimidate the protesters? Let's even assume that they ob observe all the necessary protocols. Of course, um, it's not only in Abuja that that has happened, also in Lagos there have been attack on uh, peaceful protesters. And uh, this is very untoward. This is very unfortunate. Uh, 
to break the ranks of Nigerian youth who are embarking on peaceful protests uh, should not result to uh, maiming and killing as well as uh, uh, vandalizing their properties. Uh, but um, the cause must be before the effect. According to Abakamos, rebellion does not exist without a feeling that somewhere in some ways we are justified. The bottom line is that uh, it, it, you know, um, many lives have been lost to pro police brutality over the decades, and people have had enough of all of this, which is why uh, you have this protest. Even in the US, during this COVID-19, uh, when George Floyd was murdered extrajudicially, uh, extrajudicially by, by a police officer, uh, the entire world was engulfed in protest uh, in support of police reform in the US. And that's why Nigerian youth are also planning to take their destinies in their hands and see to it that uh, they are, this time around, they are able to extract not only commitment, but okay. prompt action to ensure there is professionalism in Nigeria security agencies and that we are able to have a professional police force okay. that will be uh, friendly to Nigerian citizens where uh, nobody will be uh, extorted um, or, or that um, you know faceless people are sponsoring uh, hoodlums to now attack these protesters who are embarking on genuine uh, agitation okay. for a better country. Because exactly. whether we like it or not, without security, without lives and property being secured, we are all endangered. That's true. We are all endangered. And okay, that's Mr. the Gideon, So Nigerian youths are doing for us what the elders of the country exactly. could not do. But I believe, and very strongly too, that in order to avoid this kind of attacks, there should be a controlled a specified place where this protest can take place. And be governized. I mean, Thank you many so much, Mr. Gideon. Yes, there was protest about bring back our girls at Unity Fountain. And they were allowed day in, day out to hold their protest there. And this has. Okay, Mr. Gideon, I'm so sorry. Time is fast spent. To go to the Unity Fountain. I, I think your position is very clear. Or the forecourt of the National Assembly. And I believe that if they are there, there will be no harm uh, befalling them. Police can offer protection for them at those places. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Gide Ujo. And uh, you've done justice by cleaning up all the issues that we wanted resolved. And it's unfortunate. We understand Mr. Bola of our connection has gone again. But trust me, that's a conversation that we are yet to agree on. Should we have a rallying point? Should we have an arrowhead? Those are the issues that a lot of people are looking at. But kudos to all the protesters. Kudos to the initiators of this protest because they are getting response. And not just response, a very quick one at that. Thank you once again, Gideo Ojo, for your time. Thanks for having me. Do enjoy your weekend. I will. I hope so. Okay, and thank you for staying with us, our viewers. We will take a short break now. And when we return... Very shortly, I'll be giving you my take. Please stay with us. Once again, we are confronted with issues that divide us. While everyone is entitled to its opinion, it is advisable that we should be sensitive to each other's sensibility and sentiment. The voices of government and the governed have been largely uniform on police brutality and excesses. Why bring up issues that shows lack of concern for others? The fight against insurgency is primarily fought by soldiers and not by anti-robbery policemen. Yes, police support is needed and there are different units of police force like anti-terrorism units, anti-bomb units and others and not SARS. This protest has been largely apolitical, non-ethnic, and should be non-religious as displayed on protest grounds today. However, for the protesters, 
Can we harmonize the demands and be strategic to achieve the ultimate aim of this demonstration, which is to give birth to a system that works? To the government, this is a golden opportunity to buy back or end the trust that has been missing between the government and the governed. Let's see you match your words with action. This is not about who wins or who loses. It is about a system that works. And that is my take on this issue. Plus Politics returns same time on the same station on Monday. I remain yours truly, Coyote Ladeinde, saying bye for now.